Guys, I have got something very special to show you today. I can't believe I got given this. Uh, yeah, just a complete bucket of spokes. And I also acquired this and um, another bike. So there's definitely a story here. Um, a story that kind of begins with uh, a phone call and that phone call was from my guy of the powder coating place that I, I tend to use and that's how I sort of began this little to and fro and ended up with two very special bikes this one being the first one in all the morning, winter, well autumn like glory Basically, my guy at the powder gate place had had a phone call of one of his old customers or one of his old clients and um, he was asking if he knew anyone that might be interested in a couple of old, a couple of old gents bikes. Um, now the garage is pretty full but I said I would be interested and that I would take a look. So he passed my phone number on and all that jazz and um, Clive the owner or the custodian of this bike the other bike and a couple of others um, got in touch with me now Clive's granddad um, back in the 1940s I believe he said um, it started off building wheels he had a business that just pretty much specialised in um, building wheels for bikes and then that took off and grew into a bike shop, two bike shops, three bike shops and he eventually grew a, a small chain of bike shops which then later on obviously Clive's dad took over and um, I think he did say that those bike shops lasted all the way through up until the 1990s when unfortunately they decided to just shut up shop and um, close down. This particular bike is a nice special one I believe. Um, you can see obviously the, the sh odd frame design, <laughs> the uh, dropped rear triangle, kind of a sporty, it's kind of a look that you'd expect more nowadays on a bike. Um, but this is what we believe or what uh, Clive remembered was a sun and if I look very 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 closely on the head badge on the head tube itself although the head badge is missing I can see the triangle outline of where the sun badge used to be now I'm still trying to work out exactly what year what model this is um, but seeing as it was owned by Clive's granddad who started all these bike shops I am pretty certain that this has been changed over the years. It is a bit rough, but you no, know, I'm going to get it back up and running. The origins are a little, a little muddled on this. Um, I can't. I just simply can't track down the exact bike in the catalogues. I've looked through the Veteran Cycle Club library um, from the 20s all the way through to the 50s of Sun's catalogues and not one of the bikes in there has these drop seat stays so I'm a little confused as to what it actually is I'm sort of 80% certain it is a Sun um, but yeah the mystery continues for a start it has that lovely Dunlop saddle which is although rusted on the rails underneath the leather itself looks in very nice condition with the the rivets still intact all around. Um, it has been, or it does have a Cyclo Benelux three speed derailleur on there. Um, whether that is original, I do not know, uh, but that is connected to a drum brake. And I would have expected, just from my my experience that a three speed is possibly you know maybe early 50s possibly late 40s um, which sort of goes against the 30s idea 
but I still believe this is could be a 30s bike. And one of the reasons I believe that is because of the clipped headset. It, it, I've noticed it on some of the earlier bikes, they don't just have the complete threaded headset. Um, there is this clip in the middle that you'd expect on sort of a shopper bike of the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, but yeah, this is definitely older, older than that. It does have the sort of standard Williams crank set on there, which I might actually be able to get a date off because they do have date codes on the back. So I'll look more into that. Uh, and up front, it appears to have not the drum brake, but a set of cantilevers or they could be resilient. Yeah, they could be resilient front brakes or a front brake, sorry. So it's quite an interesting bike there. Uh, unfortunately, it does have a bit of damage. The Apex, uh, Apex 10 celluloid mudguard on the rear is broken, is fractured, but I might be able to repair that. Uh, looking at it, it does slot back into place uh, once you know you align everything up and it doesn't look like any bits are missing. So I might be able to just get that in place and fiberglass it back together. Now the plan for this one is to sort of go over it with a fine tooth comb. I'll probably have to rebuild the wheels because um, the spokes are, you know, how old is that, 80 years old, potentially. Um, and they are very rusty. The rims as well aren't very good for braking, even though obviously the rear is drum. The front still needs the rim to be in good condition. So I'll probably end up replacing the rims. Uh, but everything else actually turns, spins, and is somewhat usable as it is. So it's going to be a good clean up, uh, try and de rust everything. But yeah, we'll, we'll get this one back up and running, and it will be a lovely, lovely bike. So that one's interesting. Um, as I was shooting that B roll, then I actually found out what model it was. The light hit it perfectly on that seat tube. Um, it turns out it's a super light. I did think this was quite a light bike when I picked it up, considering you know how old it is and how much steel is going to be on this. Um, so yeah, it's a Sun super light, age to be determined. Um, but yeah, we're one step close at least. And yes, I know the, the fork is very rusty, much like the BSA. So that's going to need some careful poking around with. But the second bike is here. Um, I instantly recognise this one because I've technically had one before. Um, it is a rally sports model and this one I'm pretty accurately or fairly well accurately dating to around 1938. It is a very nice bike, very nice indeed. Um, it has been looked after during its lifetime. I think this one was a uh, Clive Stads, I think. Um, but yeah, it, it has been well looked after. The crank set obviously got replaced at some point, maybe due to wear. Um, so it does have a later, uh, what does that say? I can't, I can't read that from here. Um, it does have a later crank set on there. It has some later pedals on there, which I look at replacing. And it also has a later shifter on there. So that means the K shifter is gone because it has a Sturmi Archer KB6 hub on the rear. So there's three things I definitely need for this. Crank set, pedals, and shifter. So if anyone has those period items, let me know. Um, do on the K shifter, quadrant shifter, and it should be on the top tube. Um, but the marks are there for it. The uh, sort of where or the shiny parts where the band was are there, but the shifter isn't. So yeah, I definitely looking at getting that. Um, the saddle has about three different covers on there, so I haven't actually seen what's underneath. So I'll probably be taking that off as I'm going on. The bars are celluloid covered. Uh, what style would that be? Like North Road style, um, and it just still has the original levers. Um, everything else is original on it, like mud guards. The mud guard is a little bit battered. The rear one, uh, sorry, the front one is a little bit twisted. So I have to beat that back into shape. 
um, but the paintwork is is beautiful on this one. It's really nice. Um, I'm hoping if I give it a careful clean up and protect it, in I'll, I'll clear coat this one because I don't want the um, the sports model decal down the seat tube is very faint. Um, but we do have the original bike shop uh, logo on there as well, supplied by what was it W E Lean. Uh, and the head tube, the head tube, the gold head tube is a dead giveaway of the age. Um, after looking at so many rally catalogues, I've seen that that gold head tube is definitely a pre-1940 head tube. Um, and it doesn't have a metal badge on there, it has a stenciled on or painted on, um, however they did it back then. Um, head badge, so that is beautiful and needs to be preserved. Um, the rims on this and the spokes again pretty rusty however both are drum so you could argue that I could get away with keeping them I'll have to see how true they are, have to see how strong they are but ideally you would probably want to rebuild the wheels because um, I do want to ride this like this is a nice bike uh, it, it's quite a relaxed geometry on it um, it'll be nice to just cruise around on and it, again it's not too heavy a sports model they weren't the lightest obviously rallies but it's you know fairly good for its time um, I do still have to do a bit of digging on this one a bit more digging to see exactly what is involved with surfacing the hubs um, I've never done a K-series hub and I've never done drum brakes obviously the BSA has drum brakes but that is still <laughs> seized in a mess um, and I thought I actually thought these two would make a very nice addition alongside the BSA um, having a, the Rally Sports model and the Sun Superlight alongside the BSA Clubman was it? Um, be three very nice bikes so yeah I didn't really need two extra projects but when someone calls you up like this and says got these old bikes do you want to come and have a look and they turn out to be these it's hard to say no um, and especially after hearing the story you know about um, his grandfather who owned the Sun the Sun Superlight uh, riding it around with him in you know the, the 60s um, it, it was something that I thought I had to keep alive uh, so he has had some money for them um, and he actually had enough to want to give me the other ones as well for free um, so there is two extra ones that I need to pick up at some point one is just a Kerry's um, single speed ladies bike or step through frame which I think I've already found um, another custodian of so that will be going straight to them and the other is a CWS, a Cycle Works Tysley, um, which was actually a bike produced by the co-op, the cooperative, um, so especially for their catalogues, their customers. Um, but that one is in quite a rough state, very rough in fact. But I could have salvaged a couple of parts of there. It has the drum brakes, it has a beautiful set of celluloid mudguards, I think made by Apex. No, Britannia for those ones. Um, so yeah, that, there'll be a few nice parts on that bike. Um, and there was actually a fifth bike there. It was a Cloud Butler 531 tubing. It had some Campagnolo parts on it. The front derailleur and rear derailleur and shifters. Strong light, crank set, Vyman brakes. It was a very, very, and just a, a, a plastic Brooks vinyl saddle with some Blue Mills air weight. Uh, Mudguards, a very nice bike, um, but I passed on that one and um, advertised it on Facebook for him. And um, Jack went and collected it. So, yeah, Jack has that bike now, um, and I have these two to work on. <laughs> so, they'll be very nice. Um, I'm really looking forward to actually getting these back on the road, especially for what they are. And so, I hope you've enjoyed this story time I guess 
Um, I'll try and get some more information about these bikes from Clive. Um, I know he has pictures of his granddad riding the sun, so maybe if I can get those, I'll include those in that video if he allows. Um, but yeah, I wanted to keep these alive, um, and especially finding out that's a super light, a sun super light. That is a very, very, very nice bike. <laughs> so very lucky, very lucky indeed to get these two. But yeah, that's it for today. I'll carry on working on the Marin uh, Palisade, that build that I'm doing. Um, and then these will be thrown in at some point. Obviously gonna take quite a bit of work with the building of the wheels. But as you saw, brakes work. The brakes work, which is awesome. Nothing is seized. So yeah, looking forward to them. And again, hope you like the stories and I hope you like the stories to come with these. So thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more about them and I will catch you in the next video.